Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. US 30 there has actually reached yet another all-time high today. I did a big reversal in for fortunes yesterday looking at this candle right here. We had a very, very strong Philly Fed number, completely beat expectations there again. Um, Eurozone's not doing quite so good with some of their uh, data results, but their equities are still pushing up a little bit higher. But America looking pretty, um, pretty decent. Uh, US dollar still looking okay, but we had some shock um, kind of news come out of Japan last night in regards to the Japanese yen, but I'll come back to that in a second. But this is a technical breakout. It's not punching through with a huge amount of vigor, um, but we are looking at, uh, we were trading uh, above that potential resistance at 17.738, and as you can see, we're above that right now. And there is a bit of an absence of economic data today, to be honest, of any consequence. We do have some UK public finances data, let me fast forward on to Monday. We've got some more uh, housing price data, some German data. Uh, nothing major US-wise until you get to GDP there on Tuesday. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Um, looking at the UK 100, we actually had some, some pretty decent data come out of the out of the UK at the start of the morning there, with CPI and PPI, etc., uh, which was slightly better than expected. Retail sales, in fact, sorry. Um, and we are trading above potential resistance at 66.86 right now. Um, and this is quite a strong uh, technical signal to get after a sell-off to close. It still closed negatively, but it made up so much lost ground. We're getting quite close to that golden cross on the uh, moving averages as well. Um, obviously, the RSI and the slow stochastic there are both overbought, but there could still be a little bit of room for maneuver right there. So this could be a pivot, depending if you've got a long uh, or short view on the uh, UK 100, if you're thinking about this is going to be going short. Obviously, a break of 66.81 opens up 65.89. So Japan 225, resistance remains 17.496. Um, so what happened in Japan last night? Well, um, one of the finance ministers there has basically come out and said that the uh, Japanese yen depreciation has happened at too fast a rate, it's too accelerated, and that's um, kind of put a lot of dollar yen traders on the back foot. We talked about this previously at other sessions that um, obviously a lot of firms want the Japanese yen to be weaker. It's great for exporters from Japan uh, and also for international companies repatriating funds back to Japan if they're making their profits in dollars and euros, etc., etc. It's not so good for a lot of raw material uh, companies, especially firms that have to export a lot of imports or a lot of materials from abroad to Japan. And um, he basically said it's happening too fast. Now, bearing in mind that Japan are going to be doing lots of stimulus in the future anyway, it seems a little bit counterproductive, but that has thrown the brakes on dollar-yen ever so slightly, which probably is going to put the brakes on Japan 225 ever so slightly. Though I have read a report that um, they, I think uh, American investors bought about $1 billion worth of Japanese equities last week. Um, of the mindset that there's going to be a little bit more stimulus to help uh, push things further higher but uh, it's got to get, get above 17496 it's not done it as of yet so if you look at that reversal in dollar yen uh, on the daily charts it's obviously a doji formation bearish engulfing pattern so far today and the daily chart still looks a little bit ugly reversed about 200 points um, on the back of that statement from the finance minister yesterday. So obviously we said right about 120 to 124 was a danger zone for Bank of Japan intervention. It probably still seems unlikely to tend to just throw out these um, offhand comments to try and you know put traders back into check. But I think the reality is, is that a lot of dollar yen traders can smell blood in the water and they'll probably push this up a little bit higher anyway to test it um, to see if the Bank of Japan really uh, has, has the metal to do any, any interventionist elements to that to that strategy especially considering that they still want to have a weaker yen to a certain extent they can't have it both ways but a little bit of profit taking after this superb um, rally that we've had is not unsurprising uh, i guess a question that a lot of dollar yen traders have is is that it is this going to be the turnaround now or do we have to get down a little bit lower certainly there's a lot more room for it to go back down before we hit 114 um, so just be kind of wary out there if you're trading dollar yen so moving on to west texas crude i had a bit of a rally yesterday um, on the back of that really positive uh, Philly Fed numbers from the US. Um, global demand story as ever. I don't think it's going to be uh, anything uh, spectacular. We still have a potential resistance at $77, 75 still a potential support. Um, this could be an interesting pivot to move lower. Uh, you'll just have to wait and see. So gold, let's talk a, bit, a little bit more about gold. Support at 1186. It's still so volatile. Um, in the middle of two ranges, I can't really uh, see a lot of trading opportunity right here. Uh, it does look like long-legged candles right here at 1200. 
um, might uh, be indicative of, of a cap, but when you're already quite so close to potential support at 1186, there's not anything dramatically, not anything dramatic possible if you're looking at doing a trade on gold. So um, just do bear that in mind if you're a short term trader. So finishing up with the FX pairs, uh, Euro dollar uh, cap at 125.78, potential resistance. And uh, we're actually in between two. Um, two interesting areas right here where you've got that 21 period SMA and you do have that potential resistance. Technical indicators are neutral. Um, there's not a huge amount of economic data obviously out today either. I'd be very surprised if Euro dollar breaks through one spot 25.79 today, uh, especially when it's been in, in, in play for most of November so far. Uh, so that, that looks to be the strategic level. So do keep your eye on that one. Finishing up with GBP USD, we have had a slight reversal to potential resistance at 57.43. Again, it's another retracement. This could be also another interesting pivot. If you're thinking about a short move on GBP USD, targeting one spot 54.24, that could be an interesting point. If we, and you do have a, you do have a crossover almost happening there in the MACD, not quite as of yet. You do have that on the RSI and the Sol Stochastic there as well. Um, but a lot of dollar positive momentum still still out there. If we do break above 157.43 and you have a long view, yeah, uh, kind of more yeah, bullish view on cable, then uh, one spot 59.10 is the next potential resistance, but we're a good bit away from there right now. So that gives you a bit of a flavor of what to expect. Keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Lots of cool uh, trading setups available on here. Make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again tomorrow on Monday to find out what happened next.